Bottom third, two on one out. Luis Gonzalez at the plate. That's well hit. Thinks he's got something. But Jim Edmonds does have something. A great catch. But one of his teammates playing, can you top that in the bottom of the seventh? Luis Torero with a pop up. David Eckstein. That's a top play nominee. We got to see that again. And it looks just as good there. Top eight, runners oh, at the corners, two out. Replace your divots. Cards down, one nothing. Reggie Sanders. That'll drop. Hector Luna scores. Game tied at one. Bottom nine, game still tied at one. Gonzalez at the plate. Went down and got it. And it is time to bounce in Arizona. Walk-off home run off Ray King. Number 12 of the year for Gonzalez as the D-backs take it. Two to one. Rain Wednesday forced the Cubs and Braves to play two Thursday in Atlanta. Derek Lee sitting out with that inflamed left shoulder. Mark Pryor, well, the wheels came off in the fifth. 0-2 on Rafael for call. And for call, fouls one off. And then, how's your location, please? Frankly, not so good. Ball one. And this is ball two. Guess what this is? You got it. Ball three. So now he was up 0-2. Now he's down 3-2. And for call, dials a double to right center. Wilson Bediment comes in, and the Braves lead 2-0, looking for their 15th win in 20 games. Later in the inning, it's Andrew Jones. RBI single to center. 3-0 Atlanta. The inning not going Pryor's way. Next up, it's 78-year-old Julio Franco. <laughs> oh, he's spry. Three-run shot is seventh. 6 nothing Braves after a five-run fifth, and that's it for Pryor. He allowed six runs on seven hits and only four and two-third. Horacio Ramirez was brilliant. Top eight, Jerry Hairston. Bediment to first. Julio Franco, a great catch in the tag. Braves win 6 nothing. Ramirez with a three-hitter. His first career shutout. Chicago's seventh straight loss. So how about a nightcap? John Smoltz looking to win his sixth straight start. Smoltz hadn't lost to the Cubs since April of 93. And since that last loss versus Chicago, he's done a lot. Hit nearly 4,500 days, 115 wins, more than 1,700 strikeouts, 154 saves, and a Cy Young. Only six Ks away from 2,500. He gets Jose Macias and rings up Jerome Williams. But Smoltz would finish with only those two Ks in the game. Top six, Aramis Ramirez. He gets to Smoltz. A home run to left is 19th, and it gives the Cubs a 4-3 lead. Now, this is efficiency. Seventh inning, Ronnie Sedania on the first pitch of the inning from Smoltz. That's a fly ball and an out. One away. Next up, Smoltz's second pitch of the inning. And Nafi Perez pops out to left. So, third batter of the inning, just his third pitch. Macias, he's thrown out. Smoltz, a three-pitch inning that lasted one minute and 22 seconds. He allowed four earned in seven. Bottom eight, Andrew Jones. Oh, unstoppable is 27th that leads the major leagues and it gives the Braves a 5-4 lead still bottom eight Jeff Francoeur in his first major league game how about his first major league home run three runs shot off Glendon Rush Braves win 9-4 with a six run eighth Francoeur called up from double a Mississippi earlier in the day he gets the curtain call and of course the requisite pie in the face the Cubs have lost eight straight Pedro Martinez was picked as an all-star in his first year with the Mets, but he has to pitch for them on Sunday, and he doesn't think two days is enough time to recover, so he won't make the trip to Detroit for Tuesday's game. The Phillies' Billy Wagner took his spot on the National League team. Kenny Rogers hasn't decided if he'll pitch for the AL team, and manager Terry Francona says that's completely up to Rogers. If Rogers decides against going to Detroit, Francona said he would take Red Sox 10-game winner Matt Clement for the all-star team. Frank Onis Red Sox opening a four-game series in Baltimore. Four up on the Orioles atop the AL East. So a lot of guys getting some days off here. Manny Ramirez, Johnny Damon, Edgar Renteria, Jason Veritek all off. New additions, Alex Cora and Adam Stern making their Red Sox debut. 1-1 one, one in the third, Melvin Moore. Yard at Camden Yards off David Wells. A solo shot is 15th, and it's 2-1 Orioles. Wells allowed three runs on five hits in six. Top five, Boston with the bases loaded and Sal Fasano. Picks off Trot Nixon. A huge blunder with rain pouring down and the game about to be made official. Lee Mazzilli said that was the game right there. Another look. Nixon getting a little greedy with the lead and Fasano nails him. Huge play in the game. Bottom six, Sammy Sosa. Up the middle. 
They wave to Hata Sosa's first RBI since June 19th. It's 3-1 Orioles. And then finally, it was too much rain. The game is called after six innings. Baltimore wins 3-1, so the Orioles now three back of Boston for the lead in the AL East. After the disastrous experiment of two years ago, bullpen by committee are now three dirty words in Boston. And to some, Kurt Schilling's move to the Red Sox closers role reeks of it. Terry Francona said after Wednesday's win that Schilling and Mike Timlin would share the closers job with Key Folk expected to miss four to six weeks after knee surgery. Johnny Damien immediately cried foul, publicly bashing management's decision and insisting Timlin or starter Bronson Arroyo are more deserving of the opportunity. This from Damien, he just went off. He said, you've got a lot of upset people in here adding about Schilling. I don't think he's ready to be our closer. He's never done it. He throws 60 pitches to get loose for a game. He needs to get loose. Two outs in the eighth. The home run is hit. Get ready. Ten pitches. He can't do it. Referring to Boston management here, they're panicking. We're four games up, and it feels like we're ten down. They're panicking. They're now three up. We have two reports. Mike Massaro on Schilling's Pawtucket performance Thursday night. But first, Mark Schwartz on the spin control a day after the Damon diatribe. Boston manager Terry Francona met with Johnny Damon behind closed doors Thursday afternoon. And when Damon emerged, the Red Sox were again speaking with one voice. A dramatic departure from a day earlier when Damon, saying he spoke for the entire clubhouse, blasted the organization for his decision to employ Kurt Schilling in relief. It's, uh, you know, expecting Kurt Schilling to step into the starting rotation, which everyone was thinking. And then we get to the ballpark yesterday, and we hear he's going to be our closer. What did your manager tell you about what you said about Kurt Schilling? Um, well, he just said, uh, you're a dumb and we, we, we have a plan. We, we have a good plan. So uh, just uh, uh, back him up on this, and uh, we are going to win games. Um, uh, we need Kurt back. Um, to get guys out. And his opinion probably is because Kurt Schilling's been probably the number one postseason pitcher of our generation. And, and you think about uh, that, if we're coming in October, do you want Schilling closing or do you want him starting? That's an opinion, though. I mean, we're just players here. We don't run a team, but we can have an opinion. And uh, I think Johnny deserves a lot of credit for saying what he did, other than, you know, that he, he was a dumb <laughs> Damon made his critical remarks before he understood that Schilling was not yet physically ready to resume his role as Red Sox staff ace. Meanwhile, in Boston Thursday, closer Keith Folk underwent arthroscopic knee surgery, which is why Schilling may have to go to the pen for the first time in 13 years. And bomb-sniffing dogs were already in place before the London incident. They check everyone, um, you know, coming in and out of the stadium, uh, you know, even the players, you know, so if they're checking us, you know, at least we, we know that they're doing their jobs. You know, Mr. Steinbrenner has you know, top-notch security here to come to games and, and leave the game. So, uh, you know, we really don't think about or playing the game because we know that uh, there's a lot of protection out there. There was an increased police presence here at Yankee Stadium. As team officials said, they're taking the situation very seriously. Still, there's only so much extra that security here can do. As one police officer told me, we're on a heightened state of alert every night. At Yankee Stadium, Rachel Nichols, ESPN. And once again on Thursday night, there was a national pastime to provide a welcome diversion. Indians and Yankees, bottom first two out for A-Rod with one on and one gone. But take a look at this fan. He drops an easy souvenir. Number 22 for A-Rod, Yankees up 2-0. Michael Kay and David Justice give it to the fan. This is just an awful play. And he knows it. <laughs> E-10. <laughs> Jason Giambi, five for seven, three home runs, five RBI in his last two games. He leads off the second. There goes another one off Kevin Millwood. A solo shot, number nine for Giambi. Joe Torre said he's feeling good about himself, but that same fan not feeling very good about himself. K and Justice not feeling any better about him either. That guy's having a bad day. <laughs> Don't be afraid to bring a glove. <laughs> so two drop eBay gold mines for this guy. He's 41-year-old Rob Marchese, a businessman from Queens, and he said his son is going to give him the business because he always tells his little leaguer to keep his eye on the ball. He did get a post-game news conference, though, and he said, the first one I was zoned in, I had it locked, but the speed was faster than I thought. It hit me right on the wrist. The next time, I'll bring my glove. Bottom seven, Derek Jeter leading off. Fans left him off the AL All-Star team. 
Jeter's like, I got your AL All-Star team right here. Solo shot, number 11 for him. Yankees win at 7-2, and now the Yankees have won five in a row. Mets and Nationals playing an afternoon game at RFK Stadium in the nation's capital Thursday. Officials would not discuss specifics regarding increased security measures. National players taking a train to Philadelphia for this weekend series were encouraged to load as much luggage as possible onto a truck so they could avoid security issues with the train. The game at RFK going into extra innings. Top 11, Mike Piazza. This with runners on first and second, and Piazza had a big day. This will drop in. Carlos Beltran comes in to score. Piazza wants to stretch this into two. The hustle play, not quite enough speed. He's out at second. Cliff Floyd then trying to hustle in at home. He's out trying to score from third. The Mets are up 3-2. Piazza was 3-5, for five, but if you're scoring at home, this is 9. That's Jose Guillen. Brian Schneider, the catcher, he's 2. There you go right there. And then we go back up to Jamie Carroll. That's 6, and then back home for 2. So that's the old standard 9-2-6-2 DP. Happens all the time. Exactly. Bottom 11, pinch hitting. It's Will Cordero. Braden Looper trying to nail this thing down, and Looper does his 20th save. Cliff Floyd has it in the corner, and the Mets win in extra innings. They go into RFK, where nobody seems to win this year, and the Mets take three of four from the Nationals, 3-2-11 and 11 on Thursday. Looking to salvage a split of their four-game series with the Brew Crew. Rain and wind in the fifth. Ponchos were, well, they were attacking people, frankly. We flash back June 27th, the grounds crew. These guys had some real issues. They couldn't get the tarp out there, and it got so waterlogged with rain. It was too heavy. They couldn't move. It was a mess. They had to call the game. Back to Thursday. Ponchos continuing to attack when Ponchos attack. Next time on Sports Center. <laughs> A few minutes later, Ned Yost going to walk Alice Gonzalez. First ball at 2.59 Eastern. And finally, third base on John Hirschbeck stops the game. And well, as you can see, they've worked out their issues. They, they had some practice, the ground screw. Now, well, they're pros. They whipped that thing right out there. No, no worries. 41 minutes later, yeah. 41 minutes later, Ricky Patelico. Ball four to Gonzalez. Two batters later, Carlos Delgado pinch hitting a grand slam. The tenth of his career, the home run is 17th this year, and the Marlins win 11 to three. They salvage a split of the four-game set. It's a Pennsylvania thing, Phillies and Pirates. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Zach Duke. His second major league start. He's 22 years old. Called up last week. Top second against Mike Lieberthal. Top four, Bobby Abreu down swinging. He struck out eight. He said he got all kinds of chills out there. Bottom four, Pirates up 2 nothing on a Umberto Cota home run. Brett Myers facing Jack Wilson. And look at Pat Burrow go up and get it. We may have to see Burrow later on in the show. Pirates still up 2 nothing. Top six, Duke still going strong facing Abreu again. Got him again. Gets his first major league win. Worked seven innings, gave up no earned runs, and the Pirates win it 2-1. Finally, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, Southern California, United States of America. Bartolo Colon, he's an all-star, only three walks in his last 57 innings work, and of course, top first, he walks Adrian Beltre. Next batter, Jeremy Reed, and he's hitting Colon up for a three-run double. Raul Labanez, Richie Sexton, and Beltre all come around. It's 3-0 Mariners. Now top second, more trouble for Colon. Two out versus Randy Wynn, and what do you know, he walked it. Next batter is Ibanez, and Cologne walks him to three walks in his first two innings of work. Now, Beltre versus Cologne with the bases loaded, and Cologne's not going to like the smell of this. That's not a walk. It's worse. Three-run double. Seven-nothing Mariners. They win it 10-2. Cologne, six innings of work, seven hits, seven runs. All of them are. Twins Royals opening a four-game set in Kansas City. You know, Jose Lima's got a circle change. How do you throw that thing? Well, right there. There's the grip, and he had it working. Top four, Matt Lecroy. And the bottom just drops out. Lima looking for only a second win in 18 starts, and you'll get it with pitches like that. Unhittable. How do you get your hair like that? Well, that's another show. Bottom four, Tony Graffinino. They're loaded up the middle. It scores two on Hell Baroa comes in. They wave, wave Shane Costa as well. It's 4-1, KC. In the seventh, Baroa check swing at a shallow center. Neil Brown will score. Ruben Gotai, though, has issues rounding, rounding second. He probably just falls down. Roa had four hits. It all works out for the Royals, though. They win 8-3. KC with 12 hits, all singles. The Royals have won three in a row. Bottom two, Adam Everett. Fouls down the left field line. A fan makes a terrific catch off the deflection from another fan's glove. And this is big. You know what? We'll share it. Um, you know, things have really changed in Houston the last couple of years, because two years ago, you might remember Cardinals visiting uh, Houston. Albert Pujols' home run, and the scramble ensues. 
a closer look. The older man, knocked over by a younger fan, and the older oh, gentleman's man. wife, not happy, takes out the, the cane and just starts beating the guy with it. <laughs> Take a closer look. Two years ago, the fan who ended up with the ball was wearing a Cardinals jersey. Two Astros fans sharing this ball. So don't mess with Texas. Where we're going with that. Top five, Ramon Hernandez singles in two. Padres win 7-5. A six-run San Diego fifth. They snap a three-game losing streak. Respect your elder. Dodgers and Rockies from Colorado. Derek Lowe's been lower than low on the road. 0-7, 4.92 ERA in his last 13 starts away from home. Bottom six, Todd Helton says it's not going to get any better here. Solo shot. Forget a tape measure job. That's a GPS number. Just the 26th upper deck shot at Coors Field. And Helton's 250th career home run. That sets a Rockies record passing Larry Walker. Dodgers pitcher Kelly Wunsch sprained his ankle on his last warm-up pitch. Dodgers have been having serious injury problems, but that's ridiculous. So they bring in Frank Kellis Osoria on short notice, and Helton says, dude, I don't think you warmed up enough. Three-run shot for Helton, the second of the game, ninth of the year. The Rockies win at 8-5. It's their biggest comeback win this season. Reds Giants series finale in San Francisco. Top four, Ken Griffey Jr. Foul ball. Now Reds first base coach Randy Whistler tosses the ball to a kid. The woman next to him knocks the ball out of the kid's glove. Where's the cane? Come on! Get, get the cane! Get the cane. That's right, she should be caned for that. Bottom five, Mike Matheny off Aaron Harang is ninth and his 3-1 Giants. Bottom six, J.T. Snow. And here we go again. Left side. Fan catches the ball. And then this guy, here you go, gives it to the little kid. Now that's more like it. He knows about the cane. Three pitches later now, Snow again fouls it off. And here we go. Same spot, same guy. See, he's rewarded for giving the previous ball to the little kid. And he's keeping that one. Giants win 5 1. Long enough time to reward your patience with Sports Center's top 10. Number 10, Cardinals and Diamondbacks tied at one in the bottom of the ninth. Luis Gonzalez says, let's get out of here. Walk off shot for Gonzo. Diamondbacks win it 2 to 1. Number nine, the Brew Crew and the Marlins. Carlos Delgado in there, pinch hitting for Florida. Bases loaded. Carlos hits it center field. Clark going back, looking up, and it is gone! Grand slam! A pinch hit granny for Delgado! Marlins won 11 to 3. Number eight, Pamplona, Spain, the annual running of the Bulls. Now, you notice some guys like along the wall there. Yeah. Of course, they're going to be telling their friends, hey, man, I ran with the Bulls. You know what I mean? Except they're going to say it in Spanish, I would, I would imagine. Wuss. Get in there. Number seven, Phillies Pirates, former Red Sox great Freddie Sanchez to deep center. And current Philly great Jason Michaels. The warning track wonder. Keep Sanchez hitless on the day for the fight and fills at PNC. Number six, soccer, USA and Cuba. Landon Donovan's got a big wall of defenders in front of him, but he's not deterred. He scores, the USA goes on to win it 4 to 1. Number five, Cubs, Braves, Jeff Francoeur, first major league hit. Center field deep, Patterson back to the infield, track, wall, it's gone! Three run homer, Jeff Francoeur's first big league hit a ball. He had just been called up for the minors. Number four, CFL, Calgary versus Winnipeg. Jonathan Ryan on the punt, and he sends the punt 80 yards into the goal area for Winnipeg. And apparently in Canada, you get a point if you hit a long punt or a punt into the end zone or whatever. Forget the point. Why is a guy who can punt the ball 80 yards playing in Canada? He got a lot of roll there, though. Somebody get on the phone. Well, he's playing in Canada because you get points for punts in Canada. Yeah, you can make some dollars down here. How about Trot Nixon? He is a crook, but the Red Sox lost in Baltimore 3-1. Phillies and Pirates, Morgan defense from the Phillies. Jack Wilson, that's well hit. But the catch is even better for Pat Burrow. Jack of a home run. But Pittsburgh was going to win it 2-1. to one. Number one, the Boise Hawks and Everett Aqua Sox. The line shot. Steer, there could be a triple play. There's two. Make it three. The fans that stick around see a rarity tonight. The Hawks have turned a triple play to end the night. Holy smoke!